Blues just fell over the line, I think is the apt way to describe it, against Port Adelaide, who now for the first time in the club's history start at 0-5. You, you live and breathe the feeling of the fans in South Australia. W where are we at? I think they've been incredibly disrespectful to the coach. Um, this is a coach that came in when the club was a mess. On its knees. An absolute mess. So Keith Thomas, Ken Hinckley, David Kosh deserve respect. He has been a really good, strong coach, a great character, and has turned the footy club around basically single-handedly with some help. He's played off in the last two prelim finals. To think that you would sack him and show him that disrespect at the end of round five, I get a little bit fired up about it. And I think you need to allow him time to turn this around. And we saw signs of that in the second half yesterday. So, so you still think and make that a they can under Ken? I don't know if they can. And I don't really care if they can. But this guy deserves to be treated with some dignity and some respect to at least allow him to try. So he believes they can still play finals. Or he said that publicly. People have smashed him for that. But I don't actually... Blame him for How saying could you that? smash him for, for... He's asked a direct question. What do you want I him know. to say? No, 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 no. we're finished. I agree. It, it, it. We're going to play We're going to play our draft. It's over. We don't... Martin Williams did that one year, 2009, about after round 11 or 12, and the fans hated it. Yep. So he can't win. He's asked a question. He answers it honestly. No, I, I agree with you. And you might bring up the search for a new coach, and that that may be a com that will be a conversation, and it, and it's probably the time at the end of the year no, to I, have I'm that just, conversation. I'm wondering whether if you think the club believes that the time with Ken has, has come to an end. Do you think they see a future with Ken Hinckley beyond this year? I, if you I had to ask me to answer that, I would say I think he moves on at the end of the year. But let's treat this guy with, with some respect. I, 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 I think Porter out. definitely, the Port board are definitely looking at a future without Ken Hinckley. Well, as, as early as the end of this year? Yep. Well, why would they sign him to 2023 as well? But we know that, that contract, those contracts have performance clauses, Damien. They don't really mean much, in, particularly if you're a club who doesn't have a huge amount of money. The AFL won't let you sign two-year contracts that are watertight. I just think if clubs are getting to a point where they don't see a future beyond this year, you've got the greatest coach of all time very rarely sitting on the sidelines waiting for an offer. I just think it's an odd thing in footy. We talk about how important every single week is. Mm. If you're thinking about playing the next 17 weeks, knowing he's not going to be coached yeah, beyond that, of, of course, pay him respect, and he absolutely deserves that. But you're in a, a, a rare position here where you want to put yourself at the front of the queue for the for sacking the coach mid-season is a horrible thing to and, do. They and, disrespected Nathan it, it, Buckley last it year. Might when also they did be it. the right thing to do, though, Caro. Sometimes no, I, think. I just not in this case. Uh, their discipline was was atrocious yesterday, and I, I, uh, the captain Tom Jonas was responsible for a couple of incidents that cost them goals. So. This one here, firstly, third quarter. The only goal Carlton kicked in the third quarter. That's got to go over the boundary line. you got to, over the goal line. you got three players there. So you lose the game by three points. There's a goal there. Let's count them. you got Carl Aim on here. He's got the free kick. He's got the ball. Ill-disciplined elbow to the start. Of course, that's going to be a free kick. There's another shot on goal. And then you've got the captain, Tom Jonas, off the ball. This was actually a Port Adelaide free kick. It was reversed with Jonas top of the screen there on Kerno. There's another inside 50. And then you've got Jonas here crudely sliding in. Bang, there's a goal. Four shots on goal from ill discipline. What do you want Ken Hinckley to do about that? They lose the game by three points. Yep, cost you the game. No doubt about that. What, what, what do you make of the Blues after all that, by the way? No, I'm, 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 I'm really uh, happy with where the Blues sit. OK. And they've got some areas to work on, but start four and one. I mean, how good? I'm embracing the 50-point the, the lead they had before half-time. I know that was whittled away to three points yesterday. I'm embracing the 41-point the lead they had against Hawthorne, which is looking better right tonight than it did maybe at the time in, in round three. I know that got whittled back to a one-point result. You've got to just take, I think, with your Michael Voss, the very good out of this. And, and the very good was in that last shot there. McKay taking a, a crunch mark at centre-half back of a game that had 25 seconds to play. Just on that, Damon, the, the, the most valuable skill you can have in football is doing that and there's not in many that, that can do it. A contested mark down the line alleviates all the pressure and that's why you get the big bucks. That's why you pay those players big money. Caro, in a word, can the Blues win it? Win the flag? Yep. I think they can make top four. I'm not going to go any further than that right at this moment because when I make predictions you will just mock me. <laughs> As is the case with most predictions that go bad.